Howdy everybody, it's Zeke. What's up? I uh, didn't make a video last weekend because I had a really busy weekend. I was, uh, Saturday I went to a record lounge which is right next to um, my house. It's like a mile away. This guy's awesome. His name's Chad Schultz. And he has a little business in his garage called CS Records. He's on Instagram, that's how I discovered him. He's 1.3 miles from my house or something great dude here in Las Vegas <clears throat> and um, really cool place to hang out you know he's like the nicest guy you know gave me a beer you know um, um, we kind of puffed on a on a, a little um, pre-roll a little bit which was cool you know I haven't done that in years and years so it was great he's a great guy great great records I got some cool records from him uh, I got this which I'm currently listening to Flying Burrito Bros. It's called Cabin Fever. This is 1985 on Relics. And I love the cat, the Flying Burrito Brothers, of course. Um, I've been reading Chris Hillman's autobiography, uh, which is an easy read, you know. I, I need to need to get on it because I actually have some other books that I need to show, and I, I don't have Chris Hillman's book here. But, um, yeah, you know, the great California country rock produced by Skip Batten, and um, the cover art was done by Sneaky Pete. Klein Al, Sneaky Pete's the the um, pedal steel player. You can tell they were quite a bit older, you know, by then. This is the 80s. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I I love, of course, I will always love. Yorma Kalkinen was involved, I guess. I think Yorma Kalkinen had a lot to do with Relics Records. By the 80s, you know, these 70s artists were, early 70s artists were dinosaurs musically by then. <clears throat> um... Sunday, I went to a musician swap at um, Sonic Rodeo, which is a really cool rehearsal hall here. Owned by a guy named Larry Reha, who also owns a barbershop called uh, um, Makeshift Union. He's a really cool guy. He's like from an island in Michigan. He plays in this band, the Rhyolite Sound. That's really his band. It's a honky tonk band. They're they're great, man. I actually I had heard them. Um, I had heard them. Uh, on YouTube before I moved to, to Vegas, you know, and uh, this is just great. They're playing on the 14th, February 14th. My my wife's auntie's coming to town. I don't know if I'll get a chance, but yeah, th this is down in the Arts District, you know. It's, they had like a big room. It's called the Nashville Room. And, like all the wallpaper is like classic Nashville, like uh, like George Jones and Tammy Wynette kind of stuff. Um, really cool, man, you know. I got this record from Chad too, Ed and James. I should also mention it, Sonic Rodeo. They have other rooms too. They have the LA room. That they have like it's like all punk rock. You know, it looks like all Sunset Strip punk rock and stuff. I showed this record last time. The Tubes. I got this at the when they closed down the Record City on Charleston. And uh, yeah, man, I never listened to the Tubes before, but I actually really liked that. This was the big one that I got from Chad. David Bowie's uh, uh, Man of Words, Man of Music, which is really his second album, but it's on, um, it's a U.S. pressing on Mercury. Space Oddity's the first song. This is a killer record. And uh, was a big grail of mine, actually. I had a chance to buy this years ago for 50 bucks and didn't buy it, and I regretted it. When he died, these became, like, pretty valuable, man, and they're kind of, you you could pay quite a bit of money for these. I saw a white label promo for $1,000 on YouTube, which is insane. Uh, but this one was 65 bucks, and he gave me a discount too. So I wound up doing pretty good on it. I was really happy to have it. Um, I think I might have... I, no, I scored this from from uh, from CS Records. You know, He's such an awesome guy. I mean, I, I just can't say enough about him. He's an awesome dude. Um, I call him Giga Chad. But um, Chad Schultz is the name. He's, he's a great guy. Uh, Lightning Hopkins in Berkeley. This had some shrink wrap, but it was like ratty half shrink wrap, partial shrink wrap I didn't want to mess with. So um, this is great, man. On our Hooli. Basically a mint copy. I mean, once I took the shrink off, it just looks brand new, basically. But uh, killer, man. Just sounded so good. I love Lightning Hopkins. This was also a big one. Maggot Brain. Funkadelic's Maggot Brain. 
uh, which I used to have but sold my copy of. So, you know, it's a pretty collectible record. People really want this record. Very weird and psychedelic record. I still don't have the second one, Osmium. I, I don't have it. I've never even seen a copy of it. That's an extremely strange and psychedelic record. But he had never heard the first Funkadelic record. And so I was like, no, let's listen to this. And, you know, and then a guy from uh, Utah shows up who's like a great dude um, named Chuck. He was an awesome guy. And we wound up hanging out. And it was just so much fun, man. So at the musician's uh, gear swap on Sunday, I did buy this. I bought a, um, a tube amp, a tube uh, power amp for my home stereo. I have a Fluence... Um, uh, I have a Fluence uh, turntable here, <clears throat> Fluence, and I I have a Fluence preamp, a closed preamp, uh, preamp, preamp. I'm stupid. <laughs> a closed preamp, and um, it's a Fluence closed preamp. But I'm I'm gonna switch that out and probably put this tube preamp down here because I have better speakers downstairs. My cousin has gotten into my older cousin who I hero worshipped as a kid, Ronnie. He um, has gotten into high-end audio, vintage audio, and he recently bought some uh, Klipsch Cornwall um, speakers, which are like used. I think they're like thirty-five hundred bucks, but I mean, new they're like seven thousand dollars. And man, they absolutely kill. He was sending me videos like, "Holy shit, these sound amazing!" I did buy this guitar. I bought this from my buddy Josh. Uh, uh, who is moving to Nashville, <clears throat> my high school buddy, my lifelong friend who I lived in Denver with, Josh, um, is moving to Nashville and he sets up all of his stuff. So, you know, I don't play a lot of slide. He's, he plays a lot of slide and pedal steel. Well, my good guy gone. I don't know why she went away. Kind of got that banjo quality, you know, it's a resonator. Uh, I love it. It's tons of fun. Um, but yeah, I'm going to work on my, work on my uh, slide playing, which, you know, I'm, I'm not worth a shit at, but I got a minty copy of Cosmos Factory, the Credence Classic. CCR Classic Cosmos Factory, and this just sounds amazing. Uh, it's like brand new. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've bought this record. <laughs> I just have always been wanting to get... You know what I listened to the other day, and my cousin was listening to it on his new speakers. He was listening to um, uh, Dave Brubeck's Time Out, and I was like, man, I've ha I had like five copies of that. I went up to my shelves, I got one copy of it because I sold a bunch of records. I have a real nice, you know, uh, 6i Columbia or whatever it is, or 2i Columbia, I can't really remember. And uh, great, great copy of I put it on, and the inside track is Time Out, and it's, and it's uh, Groove Worn. <laughs> they, they just listen to that one track over and over again. I'm like, man, of all the copies I've had of that, I'm going to have to get another copy. And now it's, it's not as cheap and ubiquitous as it used to be. Randy Hansen, this was in the cheap record bin, Randy Hansen, although I like Randy Hansen a lot and think th th this is a cool record. I, these were all cheap, these were in the cheapy bins. Um, Jimmy Buffett, a back catalog, Jimmy Buffett record, somewhere over China. Uh, I like to get these kind of records cheap, you know, Pure Prairie League. I've actually really wanted all these Pure Prairie League records and don't have them, believe it or not. I've just never wanted to pay for them. These were cheap clean copies of this uh vince gill was in he wasn't in this iteration but he was vince gill was in pure prairie league uh, and i like pure prairie because i like country rock a lot <clears throat> i'm listening to country rock right now actually um dance you know these are always like you know you always see these in dollar bins and stuff but i i actually do love <clears throat> this band this was uh this was in a package, Commander Cody. Uh, I already have this. This is a promo copy. You know, again, these are cheap records. That's actually Commander Cody. 
when he had the lost ozone band you know that was more in the 60s when they were they were influencing the grateful dead and that kind of stuff here's a big one that i got um a german copy of jimi hendrix are you experienced and i, I just didn't have this and i mean it's got the alternate cover i had a us one of course but um the thing about these these European Polydor RU experiences is that they were pressed by Deutsch Gramophone. So the quality of it is amazing. Uh, it sounds so clear and amazing. In my opinion, bet a lot better than the US pressing, you know. Uh, I think I'm gonna... I was listening to this, although I already have this, of course. This was part of the big haul that I got from uh, Record City, and I'm probably going to uh, trade it to... Because I got like several hundred records from that deal, and um, it's nice now I have an outlet My because my neighbor's got a vinyl lounge he sells records out of, so I can kind of bring stuff to him. The B-52s, this is really fun. <laughs> I never I never listened to the B-52s before. Oh, here's one that I got from him, uh, from, from Chad. This is a promo comp of um, Jeff Beck. And, of course, Jeff Beck just passed away. This comp is amazing, actually. Uh, here's the promo the thing here. Uh, I love this because uh, this is the era of Jeff Beck that I think is amazing. This The 70s, early 70s to mid-70s era of Jeff Beck. Um, this covers, like, the Truth album, Beck Ola, Orange, which is a really underrated Jeff Beck album, in my opinion. Beck Bogart and Apis and blow by blow <clears throat> and it doesn't go any further than that so you know this has got some of his most interesting stuff you know you forget that rod stewart was once really cool you know and jeff beck's his his licks were so creative and so interesting and uh, he was doing interesting things and um later he got into after this he really got heavy into jazz fusion and was making records with jan hammer and stuff like that but uh this would be the era of Jeff Beck for me, you know, that I think is most interesting. Uh, although he really did interesting stuff. Even his late career albums were great and, and are really underrated. In fact, I would highly... I have a record called Loud Hailer that was like one of the one of the last records he did. It was amazing. It's a really good record. <clears throat> so, this was a cheapy record that I picked up. I either picked it up at, at Record City or I picked it up from Chad. I can't really remember from CS Records, but... Uh, this is Daryl Hall and John Oates' Beauty on a Backstreet. And this would be a band that I have never, like, ever bought their stuff, you know, Hall and Oates. But um, this record is great, man. This is a great record. Absolutely good record. I, there's nothing wrong with this record. All totally interesting. Um, really good musicianship, good songwriting. Uh, I loved it, man. I loved this. This is a cheap record that I absolutely really enjoyed. And... You know, I, I, I re have reevaluated Hall and Oates. I would actually say I have a lot of respect for Hall and Oates, especially after watching uh, Live at Daryl's House and all that kind of stuff. Uh, here's another one I got from, from Chad, uh, Wanda Jackson. Cream of the crop, Wanda Jackson, still in shrink wrap. I do collect Wanda Jackson records. So, you know, Wanda Jackson is definitely a... Uh, I mean, you know, if you're not into classic country and stuff, but, you know, she's also kind of like rockabilly. So uh, she's a really interesting um, classic country singer in the sense that, you know, it's rockabilly too, you know. Um, she was like, she toured with Elvis in the 50s. She famously kind of dated Elvis and stuff and was like super hot, like at one time. You know, look at that hair, man. God, beehive. It's crazy. Um... A girl don't have to drink to have fun. <laughs> it's all got. I talk a pretty story. She does a cover of There Stands the Glass and Swinging Doors. Really timeless songs, really. No Place to Go But Home is a Harlan Howard song. I don't know if you know who Harlan Howard is. He wrote some of the great classic country songs of all time. One of the great Nashville songwriters. There Stands the Glass was, was made famous by... Lefty Frizzell, an awesome song, an awesome classic country song. A Swing and Doors, I think, might be one of Merle Haggard's best songs ever. She does Together Again, the famous Buck Owens song. You know, I mean, this is really like, you know, it's a it's, it's a classic country record. But anyway, it doesn't, doesn't matter. I got this from uh, Chad. 
in excess promo listen like thieves i am old enough to remember this band this would have been the late 80s or well 85 you know um i i don't have a copy of kick believe it or not uh as many times as i've had that record in my hands or i'm sure i've had copies of it but i it was one of the first records i ever owned in excess kick was a big hit at the time um you know they're a pop band pop rock band but um this is a promo copy of this too but yeah uh with the stickers with hype stickers it was cheap and it's a great great record in general uh there are a lot of band you know australian bands i mean big country uh midnight oil you know uh, that i like uh in excess you know was probably my favorite you know of that of that era or whatever this is a record, I think I showed this in my last video, Tim Hart and Lost in L.A. I've been listening to this a lot, actually, lately. <clears throat> and this Lothar and the Hand People. I've been listening to this a lot, too. This is a, They're such a strange band. I mean, they're like a de the Devo of the 60s. They were from Colorado, and I once bought records from a member of this group who was a really interesting dude. <laughs> like, one of the most interesting people I've ever met. But yeah, this is live in, in Europe, like live in uh, Amherst in 1969. They do this a lot now with these old bands where they they repackage old bootlegs and stuff and repackage old concert tapes and stuff. And uh, to normally, like, while they're really cool, I normally don't want to spend money on them. Yeah, if I can get them cheap, I'm into it. But um, And I did get this one really cheap, so, of course, I was into it. Uh, I bought this at Record City. I'm pretty sure. I, yeah, I got this at Record City. But yeah, they do. They did other cool reissues. This label, they did Cauldron Fifty Foot Hose, which is a great record. I do have an original pressing of that. They did Nicholas Karras, uh, Miles to the Moon. I've never seen that ever. There's there's plenty of records you're just never ever gonna see probably. But but yeah, man, there's a lot of cool stuff in Vegas. There's the Soul Club, Sundown Soul Club. There's all kinds of cool stuff. The guy who sold me this preamp, he threw in some extra tubes and stuff, which is really great. You know. All right, guys. Deuces.